My name is Tristan O'Gorman and today I'm going to show you some of the new features in 761 Work Management. This demo was captured on a desktop computer for legibility so not all smartphone features will be available. Alright, let's get started. So I'm going to create a service request and I'm going to select heating and air as the top level category going to define the system is too noisy. We're not going to enter a photo or video at this time. If you had barcodes or QR codes, you could find your locations using that method. Obviously this is on a smartphone feature, so not possible right now, but let's use type ahead to find the location where the issue is located. I'm going to set that as location. Again, if you are GPS, you could find nearby locations on your smartphone. I'm going to select the asset and enter some additional information. So I'm going to type here. And if you're voice to text, if you're using voice to text on your smartphone, you could do that too. So I'm saying here that the sealer is vibrating loudly. It could be due to service. I'm going to submit this as a high priority request. Okay, so you can see that the SR has been created. So I'm going to log back in now as a supervisor who would typically review the request and create some work. So we go and review the incoming SRs by selecting that from the menu on the left. You can see here that the service request I just created is available. Obviously, edit the filter if you wanted to, or take some actions directly from the record in the table. Create work, add comment or close. Uh, for now, though, I'm going to drill into the service request and see what it tells me. So, you have some information here about the asset location, who reported it, when they reported it. You could enter comments or attachments if you want, but we're just going to create a, a work order directly from the service request. Alright, so you see the work order is quickly created with a tap. You can review all the areas that might need your attention. They're helpfully indicated with the big plus icon. First thing though is uh, we're going to add a job plan which will populate the work order with, with plans. So you can specify any job plans that are associated with the asset location on the work order. Turn into the asset location for more information such as work order history by tapping on either of the icons. But let's take a look now at the work order plans. So you can see all the tasks, labor, and items and materials available in the work order. You can actually add these two if you wanted to by uh, taking the action button on the top left. We also have assignments available, so you can create assignments and review and update existing ones. So for this demo, let's add a, a labor to the assignment. So you can see all the available labor that meet the criteria of the assignment, and you can apply some more filters to help your search if you wanted to. So I'm going to assign Sam as the mechanic uh, for this assignment. Tap save, and uh, the assignment is quickly created. enter some comments again using the work log feature in, in Maximo, so I'm going to type a comment as a supervisor for my technician. If there were attachments on the work order, you could also review them here. Uh, there are none, none in this instance. And reported work, if the work order was already in progress, you could keep a track on it. So. One thing to notice as well is that we have tours available uh, in 761 and you can take a tour for your work centers or, or not as you so desire. Very nice feature to get users up and running really quickly. Uh, you can also expand the panels into full screen view which will make you know, it easier to review large volumes of records as a supervisor. So you can cycle through each of these tabs to 
which correspond roughly to the the panels uh, on the Kanban board. You can also select multiple records at once and perform bulk actions, such as approving all the work orders, or toggle between this uh, table view and a, a card view. So we're going to approve this work order. Work order is approved. It's moved over to the monitor work column, as you can see here. So this is for you to be able to track it as your technician does the job. So let's uh, log in as that technician and see what he needs to do for that work order. Alright, so here it is. Uh, he can use the start stop timer to capture his time. Again, if this is something that your organization doesn't use, turn it off or on with SIG options. But let's drill into the work order for more, for more details. Right, you can quickly review and see all the information, scheduling information that he wants. If he wanted to change the um, the downtime of the asset, he could do that really quickly too, specifying when it was down, uh, for what reason. So let's see what else we got here on the work order for this guy. See the scheduling information. There's some meter readings he can take. The ability to take a create a follow-up work order, responsibilities against that, and for things that we don't currently have in the new user experience, you can w open work order tracking. So, for example, if you want to see the safety plan, you could do that. It'll open the safety plan in the work order tracking application for him to quickly review. Um, we're just going to go back to the work execution app, though. All right scroll back up and enter some meter readings and um, we can enter actual meter readings as this user all the, the meter types are supported characteristic continuous engage so we're going to enter the meter reading here continuous meter reading here and you can enter rollover if it was associated with that meter and then a final example is a characteristic, so you enter the medium in this scenario. Alright, so you can also easily report failures on that work order. So tap report failure, enter the problem by selecting it from the menu, which will cycle automatically to the cause menu, and finally to the, the remedy. Uh, menu, so once you've selected them all, the failure is quickly reported, so three taps, there it is. So we can review the work plans too as a technician. So these are the plans that the supervisor had created. You can see all the tasks and items materials. Again, you can complete the task pretty quickly, just tapping the action button. You can see where to pick up the items and materials. You can see the comments that your supervisor entered, and these are a good way of keeping the lines of communication with your team open. Okay, so let's go back to details. Change the status to in progress. and uh, we can go report some work. So again, uh, you just have the report work button. Uh, you can mark the assignment as complete. Now that we have assignment supported. Again, this is something that you can configure in Assignment Manager as to whether they close the or complete the work order or not, but there's a labor transaction created from this assignment. Again, if you wanted to manually create labor transactions, you could do so really quickly. Um, in this scenario, we've just entered a labor transaction of half an hour and it gets created for him there. Report some items and materials. Again, if there was planned items, we can select them. So uh, there was a 
gloves required for this job, so he enters the gloves, uh, specifies the bin that they're available in, and tap save. Um, if the item or material was a rotating item, that will pop the rotating asset field automatically. So this is a good way of not confusing the user by presenting all the op uh, potential fields on the one card. It'll only be displayed when the item is rotating. So we're not going to report uh, in this scenario. This is just for demo. Alright, so there's our items materials done. The work order is completed. So we're good to go. All right, let's go back in and see what the supervisor sees when the job is done. All right, so you can see here it's moved to the close work column. Um, if you don't automatically approve transaction labor transactions, you can manually approve them or review them. So he, in this scenario, we can see that this guy Mark Jacoby has a labor transaction, and the supervisor, am I happy with it? I do a quick review and yep, yeah, tap approve. So that labor transaction then gets formally uh, approved. But uh, we're interested in the work order that we've just been uh, looking at. And this work order was automatically approved. So we're going to quickly review it. You can see here that we might want to add a time on behalf of my labor. If that's something that your supervisors do, it's possible. Now in 761. So we're happy with the labor transactions that Sam created. So let's close the work order. So the work order gets closed pretty quickly. Alright, so let's go back and see what happened to that original service request. You could toggle the ability to view closed SR, so SRs are closed, so we see that the work order is closed, so the SR, because of the association, gets also closed, and there it is. Um, and so what does the service requester who entered the initial problem see? Well, we have a notification up here in the top right hand side that you can see and they get a notification that the service request is complete. They can quickly review it. If they're happy, go back out. So that completes the demo. Thank you. If you want to contact me, feel free to reach out. My name is Tristan O'Gorman. I'm a product architect with the Maximo team at IBM. And there's my email address, tristanogor at ie.ibm.com.